leadership is uh, both an individual decision and each person brings their own qualities and characteristics to leadership. And then there are some universal rules, I think, that apply to it. Leadership is the willingness to step forward when others don't. Leadership is the willing to make tough decisions. Leadership is the ability and the willingness uh, to do what is not necessarily the most popular thing, but the right thing. And different people may legitimately have different views of what the right thing is. And it means an openness to hearing various points of view. It means being willing to admit when you're wrong and to fight for when you think you're right. It's a commitment to principle. It's a commitment to, to having the willing, to being willing to put yourself in the hot seat, knowing that ultimately it'll be judged right. Moses defined leadership in two words when he turned over the leadership of the Jewish people to Joshua. He said, Chazak ve'amatz, be strong and of good courage. When he meant by being strong was not how many times you went to Jack LaLanne. And the courage is not just raw courage. What he said is, be strong in your convictions and have the courage to carry them out. There are many people who have strong convictions but no courage. There are people who have courage but no convictions. A Jewish leader has to have both. A Jewish leader has to be willing to stand up, to look back into our history, to draw on our traditions, to, to learn from our past in order to guide us in the future. I believe that every portion of the Torah gives you guidance about it. When we read about how Jacob faced off against Esau using diplomacy and yet preparing his community so there would always be a survivor group, we, and we see throughout the Bible the lessons of how you deal with anti-Semitism, how you deal with the, the internal challenges and the external challenges. That's why the Bible doesn't just pose our forebearers, our forefathers and foremothers as heroic figures without mistakes. They show us sometimes or interpret what we interpret to be flaws and may not be, but to show us that we learn from it. Judaism demands of us that we look back in order to look forward that we learn the lessons of the past, not because we want to dwell on the tragedies of the past, but to spare future generations those trials and tribulations. I am a child of Holocaust survivors who grew up with the shadow of the Holocaust and determined when I was very young that I would do what I could in any way that I could to prevent it from ever happening again. And one of the lessons I learned was, and at a very young age, and have been doing this since I'm 10 or 11 years old, that if you wanted to make a difference, you had to be in the game. And that politics was not a pejorative, but an essential tool. And that the American democracy enabled you to have that say. Europeans don't have lobbying, others didn't have it. Abba even said in World War II, Jews had influence in many places, but power in none. Jews in America have power because the world says we have power. And we have power because we care. I was once asked by uh, the Prime Minister of an Asian country, why are Jews so influential? And when I cut my breath back, I said, because Jews care. And when people care, they get involved. And people who are involved have a say. And when people have responsibility, what they say matters. That's why they have to be careful. You can't just say anything, and you can't just do anything, even if your emotions would sometimes drive you to do so. And therefore, you become subject to criticism from one extreme or another because you don't do something that satisfies either one of them, even though you may be doing the perfectly right thing. And so a leader has to be willing to take the heat, but to keep focused on what is really important. What is the ultimate responsibility? To get the maximum information, to have a Jewish set of values and a bias to look at it and a Jewish heart to evaluate it in the same way that we look at the factual realities on the ground as we determine what course of action to take. And it also means trying to convince others and then where you can't or where you're wrong, to acknowledge it and to adjust accordingly to what the lessons you learn or the information that you get. I also believe in collective leadership. I believe in reaching out as widely and as broadly as possible to every responsible point of view. But I also think that leaders should be held to account. People who, who go public in criticism of Israel have to think about the consequences of that and communities should hold them responsible for it. We have to be held responsible for the things we do and for what we fail to do. Our community responded to the plight of Soviet Jews. And when I came to New York 
at the New York Conference on Soviet Jewry, people said to me, you're crazy, Soviet Jews will never be free. And many abdicated the responsibility. But many others, people in the streets and the communities, literally devoted their whole lives to it, to the rescue of Ethiopian Jews and Syrian Jews and, and uh, Jews of Iran and Jews of Iraq and Jews of Yemen. These are incredible achievements. When God created the earth, each day he said, by Yar Kitov, he saw it was good. And Rabbi Salavechik, Zatzal asked, what does it mean? Why did God have to compliment and say, look, I did a good job? The answer is, that he offers, is that it wasn't for God. That God was telling it to us that sometimes you have to step back and say, by Yar Kitov, look at the good we've done. Look at what we've accomplished. And look at how much more we have to do. That you don't dwell and revel in how great we are, but rather be inspired but that you can make a difference. Individuals make a difference. The leadership isn't somebody coming in on a white charger and a bolt of lightning. It's every individual. It's every individual who empowers us to do what we do, but who really makes the miracles possible. Nowhere does it say who found the one vial of oil that made the miracle of Hanukkah possible, because it's the unsung heroes who make the difference and make the miracles possible. We get the credit. We're the ones who are visible. We also get the blame but we're the ones who are in the limelight. That's not the secret. The secret is Amcha. It's the people. It's the people who care and who translate that caring into action.